to Welcome to Tech Tuesday. I am Steve Leahy. Okay, we're going a little bit old school today. Today's Tech Tuesday is about this cool stuff called liquid frisket. This is something that I kind of grew up with when I was learning to airbrush. It's something that, uh, it's been around for a really, really long time. And uh, old time airbrush illustrators used to make a great use of this. I don't have too much use of it, but I kind of want to show you how it works. So I'm working on a project right now that uh, this stuff is really perfect for. So let's get into it. Okay, so here is the project, the little painting that I'm working on for the Monday Night Live feed. And the suggestion for this was Japanese lanterns floating. And uh, so what I decided to do is I put together this little image. I've got some lanterns. I've I included a moon in here. I just photoshopped a moon in. I'm going to put a bunch of stars. So I need to do the whole background and not have the lanterns get the background on it. So that's all good. I just use this photocopy technique that I use. So I've created the image in Photoshop and then I cut it out. So I've got all these great little lanterns and the moon all blocked off. But there are a few of these that are too small, these little tiny lanterns in the way background. They're too small to cut out with a photocopy, or they're not so much that they're too small to cut out of the photocopy, but they're, I don't have magnets small enough to hold them in place. So this is where this frisket, liquid frisket, is going to come in really handy. So I just kind of line this back up again, and i got my liquid frisket here, and I'll put a mask into this particular brand. I think I've used this brand for forever. It's made by Graphics. They're right here in Cleveland. And, uh, and like I said, it's just, it's just been around forever. Uh, I'm not sure if all of them work the same way, but I'm pretty sure they do. This is very similar to like a rubber cement, uh, which was also used a lot as a, as a mask. Um, and uh, it just works really well. So one important thing with a lot of this stuff, if you're used to paint, you're used to shaking your paint before you use it, you can't shake this stuff. It, it doesn't react well when you shake it, so you have to stir it. Now, I've already stirred this up, but what I use to stir it is just a simple pop stick. So you just kind of get it in there and stir it up, and you're ready to go. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, mine's a little bit older, so it's a little bit thicker, but it still works. Now, there are several ways to kind of put this on. I've always used just kind of a, an inexpensive brush but they do sell this is i don't i'll have to see if these are even still available these things are really cool uh this is called a color shaper it's made by force line and star and uh it's just a kind of a rubbery little applicator thing and it's used for all kinds of stuff uh you could use it in sculpting you could use it to blend pastels or colored pencils and you can also use it to apply liquid frisket. So what's nice about this, this guy is when you, as you kind of a, apply the liquid frisket, and I'll, I'll, well, shut up and just show us. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. So what you do is just grab a little bit of this stuff, and it's kind of like, you know, I don't know what, how to describe it, but it's, um, it's got some, some body to it. So with this applicator, you just kind of, well, with both the brush, and I'll do one with a paintbrush and one with this applicator. First thing I do with these photocopies is I just kind of fill in the middle so that it's all, you know, covered. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll do the edges. So make sure I don't have a ton of this stuff on there. And I'll just kind of run it right around the edge, just kind of dabbing it on the edge. And that kind of connects the middle that I just put down to the edge. I don't want it to slip underneath. If it does a little bit, it's, you know, it's okay. It's mostly just to kind of keep this from uh, getting paint on it. So there's the first one. And now I'll do the same thing with the paintbrush. Paintbrushes are great. Just make sure you pick one that you don't necessarily like or that's like what works great is if you have an old brush that's like seen better days kind of thing. Uh, that's a good brush to use for this because what happens is you can clean it out. Uh, I just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol right at the end. And uh, and then I just kind of make sure I get all the all the stuff out. And it's usually pretty good, but sometimes, you know, you get this stuff in there and it, it, it ruins the brush. So, or if you're like me, let it dry. Even if you let it dry, it's still, you know, it's still not going to really ruin the brush. You just got to work hard to get it out. Okay, so there is all three lanterns. I'll put this aside for a second. She'll just clean that out a little bit first. Okay, I'll let that dry for a second. And then I can pull off this background. Really, it's still kind of wet. 
so I want to be careful, but I, oh, I just pulled off all that. Okay, <laughs> this one, all of it came off because it dried. But that's okay. I'll show you what to do in an instance like that. So if you let it dry all the way like that, which I did on that first one, so I did the little one first, uh, it all dried and all pulled off. So you got to be kind of careful with that. So what I usually do is I usually, I'll usually pull the mask off before it's dry. So before it has a chance to set up, and then it doesn't do that. But in this instance, since I'm, I've already got it in there, I'm just going to freehand it. So this is the other thing you can do with it. You can actually paint with it. You know, you can, well, not paint, but you can draw with it. So you can just put in the, the item that you need, which is kind of cool. So you, this is great for, like, if you need to mask, like, leaves on a tree or something like that. That's, like, really would be an intense thing to kind of mask all off. Uh, this makes it really, really easy. So, all right, let me um, do the magic of TV and jump ahead. Once this is dry, the way you can tell it's dry is it gets clear. So I'm going to break here. I'm going to let it dry, and then we will, uh, we will pick it up from, from there. Okay, a quick update here. It's been about five or six minutes, but I wanted to show you this now. So the top two up above, the ones that I painted in after, those are still kind of half dry. If you'll notice the one on the bottom, that one's all dry now. So that shows you the difference of what it looks like. So I'm going to give it about five more minutes for those top two to dry, and then we will move on from there. Okay, and welcome back. <laughs> and I say welcome back, but you guys never really left because of the edit. But anyway, um, so these are pretty much dry. The one on the right could use a, a few more minutes, but it's not a big deal, especially for what I'm going to be doing because I'll be airbrushing. It's really like the paint goes on so, so lightly. I really just need that skin on the top of it to be dry. Um, but if you're doing this for real, you could just let it dry and you'll know it'll be fine. But I'm just going to go for it for today. So I have black in the airbrush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray as if I was... Kind of doing this paint normally. It's a lot of fun with this. Um, with this stuff, you can get a lot of different textures and all kinds of cool stuff, kind of effects. So I'm going to go over that just really lightly again. You know, like anything, even though it's not going to pull up, I still don't want to hose the thing down. All right, give me two seconds. We'll flash forward about uh, a few minutes, and I will have this whole thing all painted in. Okay. A real quick addition, I was going to finish the whole background and then get you guys back in here for the unmasking of that. But this is so simple and fun, I thought I would include you with this too. So I'm going to put all the stars in, so that's all nice and black now. So I'm just going to grab some white. And this is like a bonus, a bonus round. It's not the masking, it's a different technique, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So if I want to put the stars in and I, and I have an airbrush, this makes it super easy. This airbrush or this hose has a little... Uh, air control valve here and that allows me to control how much air comes through the line so as I turn this down you can hear the, you can hear the air and then it just turns down so what I can do with this by turning the air pressure way down it won't spray really smooth it'll just spray like little it'll spit out so I've got it really low now so when I pull the trigger back I'll get the just this like spit, which makes a great field of stars. So I'll just put the big stars in first. And all I'm doing is rocking the trigger back and forth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the air pressure up a little bit. And that will give me a smaller stipple because now the air can kind of not atomize it's not the right word but it'll it'll start to break the paint up even smaller so now i can get these really tiny stars so it gives this really cool like kind of space look all right anyway like i said that's just a bonus it doesn't take very long to do it's a lot of fun and oh let me put some big stars in actually so to get big stars in turn the pressure way down so it's just barely enough air to kind of get the paint to come out and then i'll get these big droplets. So we'll put this here and there to give some really nice big stars in here too. So you can see why I wanted to mask this off. If I didn't have this masked off, I'd have, I'd, well, it would look like this. I'd have paint everywhere. And that's not really what I wanted. So obviously with the cutouts, they do a great job at masking. 
keeping the paint off of that. So here's one of the lanterns up front and it's, you know, it's ready to go. But these are the ones that I wanted to kind of deal with. So there's a couple of ways you can get the mask off. If you do have one of these great color shaper tools, these work really well. You just kind of push on the rubber cement. Well, I call it rubber cement, the, the liquid mask, and it comes right off. So that's one way to do it. It's nice because these come in all different shapes. So this one's really nice because it's really small. I can get right in there. But if you have, say, an eraser, this is a this is a pencil eraser or a um, you know pencil shaped eraser. Erasers work really well too. And again, they're nice and sharp. So you can kind of get just where you need it like that. And finally, if you don't have that and you have like, say, a kneaded eraser, these guys work too. So what you do is you just kind of point the kneaded eraser as much as you can. These are a little bit tougher because they're, they're soft, but the rubber on the kneaded eraser will grab onto the mask too. The other thing that's the problem with the rubber, with the rubber, sorry, kneaded eraser is you have to get that off of there. So that's the mask right there. So you really want to get that off of your kneaded eraser because if not, it'll get, you know, kneaded in and then that'll make a mess in your kneaded eraser. But there you go. So there are my three tiny little masked off areas. I'll pull the rest of this. Like that. And this little one was big enough for a magnet, but there you go. So now I'm all masked off. I can go and paint my lanterns and the moon and this thing will be all done. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, go grab a bottle. It's, it's not terribly expensive. It's a lot of fun to mess around with. Uh, and, and it works with, I used it with airbrushing, but you can use it with watercolors or acrylics or I don't know if you can use it with oil paints, but I'm, you might be able to. I would worry more about the chemical reaction between the solvents and the, and the, and the mask. So check that before you use any kind of solvent-based paint with it. But, uh, but it certainly works with water-based paints. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm Steve Leahy, and uh, this is Tech Tuesday. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those other fun algorithmic things. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.